Welcome back to Otaku Daikun! Daichan here, and you're watching The Waifu Files, a series where we discover and celebrate anime and games through their lovely ladies. Today's episode is unique in that we'll be covering a collaboration event between Nikkei, Goddess of Victory, and Re Zero. This event, Recipe for You, is available to play in Nikkei from now until April 11th. ReZero is an isekai anime in which our protagonist, Subaru Natsuki, is pulled into a fantasy world fraught with both danger and delight. This time, it's his friends' turn to get dragged into another world, the world of Nikkei, where humanity fights to reclaim the surface from machine-like monsters named Raptures. Three specific characters, Emilia and her maid companions Ren and Ram, are victims of the Gatekeeper, and to return home, they need to obtain a special item. Bizarrely, this has them participating in a cooking competition, receiving help from the commander and made for you, a squad of hospitality Nikkei. Participating in the event will earn you a free SR of Ram, while Amelia and Rem can be recruited through the gacha for a limited time as SSR units. The two gacha gals also have alternative outfits. Rem's handy maid costume is obtained through playing the event, while her pure blossom design can be purchased through an event pass. Likewise, Emilia's Spring Breeze costume can be earned through the event, and her clumsy maid is exclusive to a separate costume gacha. Can't say I'm thrilled about that last bit, but don't shoot the messenger. The event also has its own mini-game, Ready to Order, where the three girls serve food at a maid cafe. You've got to match customers with their orders and preferred waitresses, though it can get pretty challenging. That leaves us with a glaring question. Just who are these girls? In this special episode of The Waifu Files, I'll be covering Amelia, Rem, and Ram independently from the rest of the ReZero anime. Covering all the waifu in that series will prove to be a monumental task, one that I can't prepare before the collaboration event ends. I'll be sure to refer back to this video whenever I do make that full ReZero episode. That said, these girls are the main heroines, so we've still got a lot of ground to cover. Without further ado, let's dive in. Emilia is a half-elf mage who's a king's candidate for the Dragon Kingdom of Lagunica. In general, this kingdom is protected by a pact with Volcanica, the Divine Dragon. Its lineage likely followed a traditional monarchy based on blood descendants, but after a mysterious illness wiped out the main family, future kings have been chosen through a royal selection between priestesses who have the potential to become dragon maidens. Emilia happens to be one of the five candidates chosen by the dragon insignia, and if not for that divine decree, she would never have been considered. You see, Emilia bears an uncanny resemblance to the Witch of Envy, who caused a great calamity 400 years prior. It branded her the most dangerous being in their world, and people fear and look down upon Emilia for sharing the same appearance. Regardless, Emilia aims to win the royal selection, as it will grant her access to the Divine Dragon's blood. Emilia was born as a living key to a mysterious gateway in Elior Forest. What it seals is unknown, yet the people of the forest know to protect it from any and all threats. To that end, Emilia was isolated to a princess room as a child and protected by her aunt Fortuna. In her isolation, Emilia developed not only her ice magic, which matched the snowy surroundings of the seal, but also her ability to communicate with spirits. She was a playful child, often sneaking out to explore the forest proper. Eventually, however, her peaceful life changed when Pandora, the Witch of Vainglory, attacked Elior Forest, murdered Fortuna, and tried to force Emilia to open the seal. The trauma from this caused Emilia to unleash a massive spell that froze the entire forest along with its elven residents. She then went into a deep slumber for nearly 43 years, after which she would finally thaw. As a total outcast, feared as the Witch of Frost, Emilia distanced herself from civilization after humans tried to sell her into slavery. She remained in the forest, watching over the frozen elves for seven years. During this time, she befriended and made a contract with Puck, an artificial spirit who sought to protect her from harm. He helped her control her rampaging ice magic. He also fought against Melaquera, a great fire spirit who deemed Amelia's very existence a sin. Since then, Puck has acted as a surrogate father figure to her. 
She would finally leave the forest after a peculiar human named Rosewall invited her to join the royal selection. Amelia's endgame is to use the dragon's blood to free the forest's people from their frozen prison. Her primary benefactor is Rosewall himself, who offers up his estate for Amelia during the election process. He was the first human to treat her kindly despite her appearance. Subaru happened to be the second to do so because, having come from a completely different world, he knew nothing about the Witch of Envy. Amelia goes from pitying him to accepting him as her knight, as without his efforts, she would have perished many times over. Given how Subaru can't tell people about his power, return by death, she can't possibly know just how much he sacrificed for her, but nonetheless, she develops feelings for him. Even now, Amelia's character is shrouded in mystery. Both she and Subaru have some connection to the Witch of Envy, but as of making this video, that truth eludes us. Either way, it's clear she's a compassionate woman who bears a tremendous burden. She's also a naive sweetheart who thinks you can get pregnant from kissing. Rem and Ram are sisters working for Roswall at his mansion. They are children of the Oni clan, a race of powerful humanoids with a high mana potency. To preserve the purity and strength of their bloodline, the Oni clan secluded themselves to remote mountain villages. Unintentionally, this pushed along their extinction. The village that Rem and Ram were born into was the last remaining Oni community. Typically, Oni are born with two horns sprouting from their foreheads. Rem and Ram, however, were born as twins, only growing one horn apiece. They were considered defective, yet when the villagers went to execute them, Ram proved to be exceptionally strong, protecting them both. Shocked by her abilities, the village deemed her the second coming of the Oni god. By comparison, Rem was considered inferior, always living in her sister's shadow. Still, Rem never let her talent go to her head, instead cherishing and encouraging Rem. They each have different strengths, after all. Disaster struck when their village was attacked by the Witch Cold. They cut down all of the remaining Oni before Rem could step in to avenge them. Fortunately, she was at least able to save Rem. However, one of the cultists, Faust, swung his blade and cleaved through Ram's horn. On the brink of death, she and Rem were rescued by Roswall, who sheltered them at his mansion. The two young sisters began to work for Roswall as his maids, and would later assist Amelia by extension. Ram is the older sister by just a bit, but with her horn chopped off, her powers are greatly diminished. She's still stronger than a human, and luckily she can still cast magic, later using a wand Rosswall fashioned from her severed horn. Even so, she requires regular mana infusions from him to stay alive. It's fairly suggestive, but it's not the kind of mana transfer I usually talk about. Initially, Ram hates this dependency after learning a harrowing truth about Rosswall. His gospel, the Book of Wisdom, dictates his desired future. Through it, Roswall knew about the attack on Ram's village ahead of time. He let it happen, knowing he could gain the sisters as allies. Despite this, Ram develops feelings for him, going on to define their relationship on fairer terms. She even helps him break free of that stupid gospel by burning it. That said, I can't say I'm thrilled about her feelings. It's very much a toxic relationship, given how much he uses her as a mere pawn. When it comes to her sister, though, Ram is ever protective, adopting a harsh, critical attitude towards Subaru. Cold on the outside, snarky on the inside. Fans just love the idea of being berated by her. Her cruelty is our pleasure. Ram, on the other hand, has a completely different appeal. She's always been sweet and demure. Even when she was in her sister's shadow, though, Rem possessed tremendous physical might, and now she's swinging around a massive morning star with ease. No joke, she's an absolute badass. While Rem specializes in wind magic, Rem uses water and ice strong enough to wound even the frightening white whale. Through a shared synesthesia, she can communicate telepathically with her sister, and even offer herself up as a substitute horn for Rem's damaged one. Just don't piss Rem off, as she's practically berserk when channeling her full might. It's in direct contrast to her usual demeanor, which is kind and submissive. 
perhaps being an underdog herself, led her to understanding and loving Subaru for all of his hard work. At first, she saw Subaru as a threat to the household, even killing him in the wrong circumstance. After he saves her life, however, she notices his pain and struggling in a way nobody else can, responding with unconditional support. Seriously, her love and devotion are on a whole other level. When Subaru's sanity and spirit are broken by experiencing death time and again, she gently holds his hand and inspires him to stay strong. Finding a girl like this is a dream come true, yet Subaru picks Emilia instead. I mean, Emilia's great, but damn, Rem deserves the world and then some. Not only does she become a human pretzel, but she then goes for multiple arcs being erased from everyone's memory. I'm not even into maids, but it's for Rem's inner beauty that I stamp her a certified favorite. Perhaps Subaru should make like Rudeus and form a harem. So there you have it. Hopefully you now have a much deeper understanding of the new characters you can recruit in Nike, Goddess of Victory. Which one of them is your favorite, and who would you roll for in the gacha? As always, be sure to check out my full Waifu Files playlist for so much more, and let me know which anime or games you want covered in the comments below. See you later. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this channel, help us grow by liking, commenting, sharing the video, subscribing to Otaku Daikun, and most of all, smashing that notification bell so you don't miss out on all our anime lore, discussions, and let's play content. You can support us directly through Patreon, Subscribestar, or a YouTube membership, all of which come with benefits like spicy exclusive vids and early access. As always, celebrate, celebrate your, your fandom. fandom. I want to give a special shout out to all my $10 and up supporters. Videogamer75, Dante Pendragon, Steven Elak, Samuel Gersten, The Nonchalant Ostrich, Otaku Mom, Jens Bauman, Mystic Samurai1983, Lord Ormagoden, Freebrick, Alexis Yukio Gomez Yamato, Link Pendrago, Observer Bellis, James Hewitt, Uncanny EXP, Zamas Autonomous, Scout, Yuki Eidos, Crow Kalem, Saul Soto, Tristan Riggin, Major, Caitlin P, Sogai CH, Vladimirovna, The Taz 96, Jonathan Padua, Kengo X 77, Hersha of E Rated Hands, Alistair Bernadotte, and Akakaze Yume. Thank you all so much!